Hey everyone, welcome to another watercolor video. Today I was refilling my watercolor pens when I had the idea to talk about the colors that I use up most frequently. So these are the four colors that I use up the fastest. This is Winslet & Newton's version of Burnt Sienna. They use the pigment PR101. This is transparent synthetic iron oxide. I use this interchangeably with Daniel Smith's version. This is PBR7. The next color we have French Ultramarine. This pigment is PB29, Ultramarine Blue. And next is Sap Green. This is a mix of two pigments. So we have Quinacridone Deep Gold, which is PO49, and Phthalo Green, which is PG7. And the last color is New Gumbosh. This is, let's see what this is. Nickel Dioxin Yellow, PY153. By the way, Daniel Smith, they have updated the formulas for Sap Green and New Gumbosh because they ran out of certain pigments. So for the new Sap Green, they have this combination, which is PO48 and PY150 and PG7. The old formula uses PO49 with PG7. PO49 is Quinacridone Deep Gold. They no longer sell Quinacridone Deep Gold with PO49. So that's why they had to switch. I think they ran out of that pigment. And for new Gumbosh, the new new Gumbosh uses PY97 and PY110. The old version uses PY153. You know what? I should probably save up the old formula and compare them with the new formulas. All right, let's talk about why I use up the four colors, these four colors so quickly. Now, Burnt Sienna, this is a very versatile color. You can use it to paint anything that is brown, tree trunks, branches, and French Ultramarine, another very versatile color. I use this to paint anything that is blue. And when you mix these two colors together, they can produce a very beautiful gray. So let me switch out this version of Burn Sienna, which is PR101. This is a rather pale color. It's not very strong. So if you really need the intensity, you have to use more paint. And that's one reason why I use a lot of Burnt Sienna. I also want to compare this with Daniel Smith's version, which is PBR7. Many other companies use PBR7 for their Burnt Sienna. So you can see very different. So this is more reddish, a bit more orangey, and this is a bit more brown. Let's test this. Let's mix these two with French Ultramarine and see what happens. This is Winston Newton's Burnt Sienna with Daniel Smith French Ultramarine. We can get a really nice gray going on. Let's add a little bit more burnt sienna. And now let's use Daniel Smith's version. Daniel Smith's version is also pretty nice. Let me add a little bit more burnt sienna. The look is very different. So with Winston Newton's version in the area here, it's a bit more brown. And for Daniel Smith's version, it's actually more like a muted violet, a very muted violet. Both ultramarine and burnt sienna, they are granulating paints. So you can see some beautiful textures when you use them together. So that was Winston Newton's version. This is Daniel Smith burnt sienna with ultramarine. The texture, the granulation, it's more obvious when you use it on rougher 
paper like cold press paper or rough paper the paper that i'm using here it's almost like fine grain so the texture is not that obvious let me switch over to using a different paper to let you see the texture so on rougher paper or cold press paper the texture is more obvious this is winston newton burnt sienna mixed with ultramarine and this is the daniel smith version mixed with ultramarine and this paper is Dela Rowley aqua fine watercolor paper and this is french ultramarine a very beautiful granulating blue i like to use ultramarine and burnt sienna to paint anything that is gray like clouds roads i also like to use um, this mix to glaze over shadow areas the next color is sap green this is a very beautiful green that i use so often to paint green trees grass and i mix this with ultramarine to get a darker shade of green so when you add ultramarine to it you can see the green it starts to become darker and when you add burnt sienna to the mix you can get really dark greens you know greens that are in the shade greens that are in the shadow for greens that are under the sun i would use sap green like this straight from the tube to give the wash some variation i would add ultramarine to it so that you can see some colors blending and for the shadow areas i would add more ultramarine and burnt sienna you can get colors like this the fourth color that i use most often is new gamboche sometimes i like to mix this color with lemon yellow to give lemon yellow some variation but most often i would mix this color with red to turn it to give it to produce a warm orange so I've just added quinacridone red to it. Depending on the red that you use, you can get a peach light -like color, a skin tone color, or if you use a really warm red, you can get a bright orange. Because this color, New Gamboche, it's almost orange to begin with. Here's a closer look at New Gamboche when mixed with a red. So these are the typical mixes I can create with the four colors. Let's take a look at some example sketches. So for this particular sketch, you're going to see that I have used a lot of French ultramarine. I mixed Daniel Smith's version of ultramarine with their version of burnt sienna. That's why you can sort of tell that this is a very muted um, violet gray neutral tone as compared to Winsor and Newton's version of Burnt Sienna. And for the yellows, I use a little bit of lemon yellow mixed with new gamboche. Lemon yellow on its own is a bit too striking, so sometimes I like to mix it with new gamboche to sort of tone down that yellow. And for the greens, it's sap green. And for this sketch, I use ultramarine for the sky and sap green for the trees for the leaves you can see that i have added ultramarine into the sap green to make some shades darker to give it some variation and for the shadows in the trees i added some burnt sienna but it's not that obvious here for the tree trunks it's ultramarine and burnt sienna in concentration so you can get the really dark uh, tone for this building here it's ultramarine you can see the beautiful granulation that's one reason why i like to use ultramarine and on the ground here it's also ultramarine these are the colors that i have used for this sketch this may look like ultramarine actually it's not it's cerulean blue but this part here the darker area this is ultramarine mixed with Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna and for the shadow areas for shadows I like to glaze over with a mix of ultramarine and burnt sienna you can see the beautiful granulation the texture created by that mix and again here sap green this is French ultramarine and burnt sienna more sap green 
And for this sketch, I used a lot of sap green. So that's why I use up sap green so quickly, as well as French ultramarine and burnt sienna. So these are the four colors that I use most often. How about you? What are the colors that you use very frequently that you use up very quickly? I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comment section. That's all for today's video. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If not, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.